Hi, welcome to another video on PolyML. Today we'll be looking at some very basic pattern matching and how this can be beneficial to recursive functions. Pattern matching in ML allows functions to take multiple different input values of the same type and output a different result depending on what the input value was. It can be thought of as multiple different variations of the same function separated by the pipe symbol. The pipe symbol is the symbol just to the right of your left shift key on a QWERTY keyboard, or it is shift and backslash. So if we were going to create a simple function that took an integer value as an input and outputted its string equivalent using pattern matching, it would look something like this. Start off with the standard function, call it number, we'll take one first with the output one, separate the functions by the pipe symbol, and then write an additional function that takes in two, outputs two, then we'll have a third pattern, which will take in x, or any number, and that can output number. So what this has now is it has three patterns, the first one taking in one, which will output the string one, the second pattern will take two, which will output the string two, and the third one will take any other integer value and output number. Notice how the type of this function is int arrow string, meaning that it doesn't matter how many patterns you have, they must always take an integer input, and they will always have to have a string output. Pattern matching is not limited to integers and strings. You may use any type in pattern matching, as long as the inputs are the same and the outputs are the same. So let's show how pattern matching can be used in recursion. Let's create a simple function that adds in every number from one to x specified integer. The easiest way to do this is to create a function that counts down from the specified number to a base case, which would be one. So if we start off with sum one equals one, which will be our base case, and then we'll create the second pattern, which will be the specified number, and we'll add that specified number to every number underneath its own number. So that is counting down, say from 10, it'll go 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and so on, adding itself to the next number below. So if we take 3, for example, without recursion, it would look like this. It should be 3, and then I'll add on the number below 3, which is 2, add on the number below that, which is 1. But as our base case is 1 equals 1, it'll only add on 1 and won't recursively call itself, and it'll end which will give us back 6. So if we try that now, we'll do sum 3 gives us 6. Same as if we do sum 4 gives us 10, as it's got the additional 4 to add on from 6, which is 10. Something to remember through pattern matching is that ML will always pattern match to the topmost part of the function, or the topmost pattern. So that means now our first example where we pattern match to 1 equals 1, 2 equals 2, and then x equals number, if we switch that around and did fun number x equals number, and then continue on to do the rest of it, which would be 1 equals 1, and then number 2 equals 2, this will give us a warning, as this will never get past the topmost pattern as the topmost pattern is in any integer. So to show this, let's do number one. This should give us back number, because this is the topmost pattern. Then if we do number two, it gives us number back again. As you can see from the warning, what ML is telling us about this function is that pattern number two and pattern number three are redundant, as it can find a pattern before them that satisfies any criteria that you could give this function. And as the input of this function is int, x can take any integer. So the first pattern is the only pattern that will ever be called. If we were to rewrite this function without using pattern matching, what we'll be looking for is a fun number. We'll just have x, so we can take any integer. Then we we'll go into if statements. So we have if x is less than or equals to one, then return one. Else, if x is less than or equals to two, then return two. Else, x 
can be any other number, so it will just return number. This function should work exactly the same as the other one. So if we just do number again, 1 turns 1, number 2 turns 2, number 3 should return number. You may think, why use pattern matching when you can just use if-then-else statements? But think about pattern matching. It is not restricted to only three patterns. You may have 10, 20, 30, any amount of patterns that the compiler can take. Whereas, if you wanted to create 30 patterns using if-then-else statements, how big would that one function line be? When you could pattern match them, make them more legible and easier to read. This does not even include maintainability. How much easier would it be to maintain 30 lines of patterns when you can individually select single patterns to alter or remove in comparison to a one long line of if then else statements? Obviously showing pattern matching off with such simple functions doesn't show its true power. However, this should give you a basic understanding of what pattern matching is and how it can benefit recursive function calls.